how good does magnesium help with anxiety? So kind of like, how does magnesium help with anxiety? So if, if you had to ask me, Dr. Rachel, what are your favorite supplements? You know, what are things that you really think that people need to focus on? Magnesium is right up there. Um, magnesium is one of my top. So um, when it comes to anxiety, there's so many studies about magnesium and anxiety and depression. So um, kind of let's get into it. So when you have a magnesium deficiency, I think one thing that we have to keep, it, keep in mind is that it manifests itself in a variety of different ways, not just with depression, but these are people who are stressed out. You know, they're easily, you know, easily agitated, easily startled. Maybe they have insomnia, trouble going to sleep, headaches. You know, they complain of like throbbing headaches. Sometimes those headaches are ones that if you touch the scalp or touch, touch the forehead, you, you can reproduce it or it might even help it, almost like a scalp massage. They're, they're tired, constipated. They, their feet may cramp, their legs may cramp. They're complaining of um, lots of different muscle cramps. Uh, you'll go to the doctor and the doctor will, will check your potassium. It's usually not potassium, it's probably magnesium. They're anxious, totally anxious. Sometimes they have trouble remembering things. They might be leaving, um, you know, car doors open or leaving things, losing things. Can't remember where stuff is. Restless leg syndrome. You know, they're sitting at the desk tapping, 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 or they're laying down in bed and their legs are moving. Palpitations. These people oftentimes show up in the emergency room with the heart racing, and you know, almost like a panic attack. Dark circles underneath the eye associated with magnesium deficiency. Um, so magnesium deficiency can manifest itself in a lot of different ways, but I also think it's important to note that there's really no good way for you to step into the lab tomorrow or ask your doctor to measure your magnesium. Um, it, it is very complicated to, me to measure um, magnesium levels within the, the blood cells. So that's a more expensive test. So I, I always go off of symptomology, you know, like going through and taking a long history to see what symptoms are there. So when you're taking magnesium, how does magnesium help and how does it help with anxiety? Well, one thing I want to mention is there's, there's, there's a neurotransmitter called GABA in the brain. And GABA actually is, has the job of slowing down brain activity. So high stress people, and when things are in, in flux, usually have low amounts of GABA. So what magnesium actually does is it actually goes in and can stimulate GABA receptors and make GABA active. So it kind of slows down brain activity, not in terms of thinking, it's not going to make you slow. You're not going to be on the slow bus, but it's just going to slow down thinking so that you're not, you know, ruminating or thinking bad thoughts or can't, can't, can't shut your brain down and all of that, right? Another thing that magnesium does is it actually um, restricts the release of stress hormones. So that's like the cortisol. Um, you know, we talk about cortisol a lot and how that's a stress hormone. Cortisol is important. We do need a stress response and we do need stress hormones. But what we don't need is for cortisol to just stay around and be present and prominent. So cortisol is designed to go up and it's designed to go down and it's designed for our body to clear it out, get rid of it so that we can start the stress response again. So magnesium actually helps restrict the release of those stress hormones. Another thing that magnesium does is it causes the tight muscles to relax. So this is why we use Epsom salts. Did you know Epsom salts is just magnesium sulfate? So magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts penetrates it through the skin into the muscle tissue and helps them relax. It helps with the cramp. It also does something called increase brain plasticity. And what's happening with brain plasticity is brain plas plasticity is our brain's ability to rewire itself, right? You know, we're rewiring our brain when we're trying to teach ourselves new habits, right? I'm trying to teach myself. I want to get up at five o'clock every morning and and do some jumping jacks, right? That requires rewiring the brain to think that this is a positive thing and to feel comfortable and confident doing it, right? So what happens is magnesium actually increases brain plasticity and it increases the brain's ability to kind of heal itself and rewire, which is important when we're dealing with depression and when we're dealing with anxiety. 
Now, there's also plenty of data on how it improves depression. If you find a psychiatrist who practices holistic or integrative or functional psychiatry, they always put their patients on magnesium because magnesium improves depression. It actually helps boost dopamine and it helps boost serotonin. Huge, right? Now, another thing that we don't talk about is that magnesium you know, this is why magnesium is one of my favorite supplements is it stabilizes your blood sugar. So, you know, people who have magnesium um, deficiency, those, these are your people who are like hangry, you know, they're not just angry. When they get hungry, they are hangry. Well, what magnesium actually does is kind of helps the body stabilize blood sugar. So you don't have the highs and the lows and things like that. And magnesium to the core, and I want to circle this one, is an anti-inflammatory supplement. It helps decrease inflammation. So that's why magnesium is so important when it comes to helping decrease anxiety. Um, it helps decrease the palpitations. It helps decrease muscle tension, right? So, so what, what are we doing when we can relax the muscles? Well, you notice when you go and relax your body, you feel less stressed, right? Um, so that's how it also helps with it. So let's talk about some magnesium rich foods because of course, everybody always wants to go straight to supplements, but here's some great magnesium rich foods like pumpkin seeds, almonds, spinach. Ooh, I forgot the pea, avocado, salmon, chicken, all very high in magnesium. And one of the things about pumpkin seeds, if you start integrating that into your life, you'll also notice that pumpkin seeds will help with the prostate too. So it's helping with magnesium, it's helping with the prostate, it's helping with anxiety. So bam, you totally can't go wrong um, with, with pumpkin seeds or pepitas or whatever you, however you do them. <laughs> and then there's different types. There's glycinate, there's malate, there's taurate, and there's L-threonate. L-threonate is kind of a newer form of magnesium that's come on the scene. Um, and a lot of psychiatrists use it to improve brain health. Um, taurate we use if we're trying to use magnesium to help um, in the process of hypertension, because oftentimes we find that our hypertensives are low in ni not just nitric oxide, but also low in magnesium too. Um, and then malate, we use malate a lot for people who have autoimmune issues, glycinate um, and stearate. You know, these are the ones that help you relax, help you sleep. These are good for people who have insomnia. So now when I used to be a prison doctor and, and the prison medical director, when I wanted guys to get more magnesium, I would just order good old fashioned milk of magnesium. That's better than no magnesium, right? You know, because I couldn't get any of the other forms in the prison. I mean, don't get me started on the prison system and, uh, and all of that. But yeah, so oftentimes any form of magnesium is better than no magnesium. I would take mag citrate, you know, mag citrate might make your bowels a little looser. I would take any of those things um, before not being able to give somebody some magnesium because magnesium helps so often. I mean, as a matter of fact, when I used to work in the emergency room, if a person came in having an asthma attack that we couldn't get under control, what do we put in their, their IVs? Magnesium. Yep. So magnesium to me is kind of a wonder, wonder, wonder uh, supplement. So um, I hope that helps.